When it comes to flip-flops, the JK flip-flop is one of the most versatile. It's widely used in shift registers, ripple counters, event detectors, frequency dividers and more. The JK flip-flop is often referred to as the universal programmable flip-flop because, by simply manipulating its inputs, it can be made to behave like other types of flip-flop. In essence, the JK flip-flop is very similar in operation to the set-reset latch, but it overcomes a serious limitation of the set-reset latch. Namely, that an invalid combination of inputs can result in unpredictable behaviour. Let's remind ourselves of this limitation. Here's an SR latch built from NOR gates. The inputs, S and R, are normally kept low, and a high pulse is applied at one or the other in order to set or reset it. The latch is said to be active high. In this case, the value of the output Q is 1, so the latch is currently storing a 1. The value of NOT Q should always be the opposite of Q. NOT Q is currently 0. A short pulse is applied at R to reset the latch. S is still 0. Trace the highs and lows through the cross-connected NOR gates and you'll see that the output at Q changes to 0. When the reset pulse is removed, R becomes 0 again, but the output at Q is still 0. The latch is now holding on to the 0. When a set pulse is applied at S, the output at Q changes to 1. The latch is now storing a 1. However, we have a problem when both S and R are made one at the same time. With this combination of inputs, we're effectively telling the latch that we want to store one and zero simultaneously, which of course is nonsense. The output at Q can only have one value. In reality, the output at Q will become zero, but not Q will also become zero. Eventually, when both inputs fall back to zero, the resting state of the latch will depend on which input falls to zero first. If R falls to zero first, Q will become one. If S falls to zero first, Q will become zero. But if both inputs fall to zero at exactly the same time, then we'll have a race condition. The NOR gates will be racing to feed each other their new output. One of them will eventually win, because of imperfections in the circuitry or external factors like temperature, but it's impossible to know which one. If both inputs become high, then fall to zero at the same time, the next state of the latch is impossible to predict. This is a state that the latch should never be in. It's invalid. Most of the time, inputs S and R should be both resting at zero and only momentarily should one or the other become one. At any point in time, the output at Q should be one or zero, and not Q should always be the opposite of Q. Here's an SR latch built from NAND gates. This version of an SR latch is active low. S and R should be kept high most of the time, and a drop in voltage at S, that is a low pulse at S, will set it. A low pulse at R will reset it. At the moment, the output at Q of this latch is zero, so the latch is currently storing a zero. When S becomes zero momentarily, the output at Q becomes one. When S returns to its normal high state, Q is still one, the latch is now storing a one. When R is made low for a moment, then the output at Q is changed to zero. R can then return to its normal high value and the latch is now storing a zero. If both S and R become zero at the same time, we have a similar problem to the one that we saw with an SR latch built from NOR gates. Both Q and NOT Q become one. If S and R return to their normal high state at the same time, it's impossible to predict the final value of Q. With a NAND-based SR latch, the input combination S equals 0 and R equals 0 is invalid. Here are the two methods of building an SR latch side by side. So how does a JK flip-flop solve the invalid inputs problem? 
Well, before we think about this, let's take a look at something that we will call, for want of a better name, a JK latch. Here's our simple, active high, SR latch, based on NOR gates. We'll add a pair of AND gates immediately after the inputs. Then we'll feed the value of output Q into the top AND gate and the value of NOT Q into the bottom AND gate. Finally, we'll relabel the inputs J and K. J to set, K to reset. This is a JK latch. It's not a flip-flop yet, but it does illustrate a fundamental characteristic of the JK flip-flop. A pulse at K will reset the latch, and the output at Q will become zero, just like an SR latch. A pulse at J will set the latch, making the output at Q equal to 1. If the latch is already storing a 1 and another set pulse is applied at J, it will have no effect whatsoever. But if both inputs are made high at the same time, the value of Q will become 0. And if both inputs remain high, the latch will switch back to the opposite state. The output at Q is 1 again. Keeping both inputs high will cause the latch to switch repeatedly from one state to the other. The output of the latch is now oscillating between 1 and 0. The speed of oscillation depends on propagation delays within the logic gates and the connecting circuitry, but it is, of course, very quick. This so-called JK latch is not particularly useful unless you wanted to build an oscillator like this. And to be honest, there are more efficient ways to build an oscillator. Nevertheless, we've eliminated the possibility of Q and not Q having the same value at the same time. And we're a step closer to the JK flip-flop. Before we do see how to create something very useful, let's try to build a JK latch from an active low SR latch consisting of NAND gates. It will help us to understand the possibilities. This time we'll add a pair of NAND gates immediately after the inputs. Then we'll feed the value of output Q into the bottom NAND gate and the value of NOT Q into the top NAND gate. As before, we'll relabel set and reset as J and K. And again, we have a JK latch. But this time we've changed the way the NAND based SR latch works. It's now active high instead of active low. This JK latch is now functionally identical to the JK latch that we built from NOR gates. There's a zero at output Q, so the latch is currently storing zero. To set the latch, we apply a high pulse to J. Now there's a 1 at Q. To reset the latch, we apply a high pulse to K. And when K falls back to 0, Q is 0 again. When both inputs are high, then, just like the NOR-based JK latch, the NAND-based latch oscillates between the two states. Again, we've built an oscillator. But more importantly, we've eliminated the possibility of Q and not Q having the same value at the same time. Here are our two JK latches side by side. Remember, they are functionally identical. They do the same thing. In the second video of this series, we saw how it was possible to add an enabling input to a simple SR latch. This involved a pair of steering gates. We can do something similar here. The AND gates of the NOR-based latch on the left now have three inputs each. All of the inputs of a three-input AND gate must be one in order to get a one out. So the new input, E, must be high in order for the latch to respond to anything from J or K. The NAND gates of the NAND-based latch on the right also have three inputs each. In order for the output of a 3-input NAND gate to drop to 0, all of the inputs must be 1. So again, E must be high in order for the NAND-based latch to respond to any changes in J or K. 
The switching behaviour of these latches hasn't changed at all. They simply have to be enabled before they'll do anything. To turn a gated JK latch into a JK flip-flop, all we need to do is supply an appropriate clock signal at the enabling input. Let's take a closer look at how this works. We can focus on either one of these designs now. They do the same thing. A timing diagram is a convenient way to examine the behaviour of a JK flip-flop. The top chart, coloured green, represents the clock signal. The bottom, red chart, is the value of output Q, which you can see starts off high. The values of inputs J and K are the purple charts in between. In this scenario, when input K goes high, there's no change at Q, because the clock is low. The flip-flop is momentarily disabled. But when the clock does go high, the reset signal gets through the AND gate and Q falls to zero. Q then remains low, regardless of what the clock is doing and what's going on at input K, as long as J stays low. But when J is high, K is low, and the clock is high, the value of Q becomes 1 again. When inputs J and K and the clock are all high at the same time, the value of Q begins to oscillate, rather uncontrollably. To take advantage of this oscillation, we need a flip-flop that will only react to the inputs while the clock signal is changing from low to high. In other words, on the rising edge of each clock pulse. In the fourth video of this series, I showed you how to build a rising edge detector using an AND gate and a NOT gate. This relies on the fact that a NOT gate doesn't invert its input immediately. For a very brief period, a matter of nanoseconds, the output of the NOT gate is the same as its input. So, for only a very brief period is the output of the AND gate high. We've effectively shortened each clock pulse to just a few nanoseconds. Here's a new timing diagram. Only the rising edge of each clock pulse has any effect, so that's all you can see on the top chart. Notice that when J and K are both high, a clock pulse will cause the flip-flop to toggle from one state to another. Another way to describe this behaviour is with a modified truth table. There's a column for the rising edge of each clock pulse. The column labelled Q next indicates what Q will become depending on the inputs. If both J and K are zero, Q remains unchanged. A cross in the clock column means anything other than the rising edge, and crosses in columns J and K mean whatever the values, they'll have no effect, Q won't change. If, however, J and K are both 1, a rising edge will cause Q to change to its opposite state. This is the definitive toggle effect of the JK flip-flop. Finally, I want to quickly mention how the JK flip-flop can be easily adapted to create a new device. By simply connecting together J and K to make one input, we now have a device that will only toggle from one state to the other when the input is high at the rising edge of the clock. We can relabel the input T for toggle. We now have a T-type flip-flop.